my goodness, this is a total disaster. Absolute total disaster of a build. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. This is Boost My Build, the series where we take your PC part picker list, we tear them up, we put them back together, and we massively increase your performance. And we've got crazy, crazy builds in March of 2023. We've got a $400, $400 gaming PC build. Can it be done? I think we can do it. And we've got a $1,700 build that's just completely lost in terms of its performance. Remember, if you get value out of the video, give it a like because it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Micro Center, my favorite tech place on earth. Great news. Micro Center with 25 locations across the US is opening three new stores starting with Indianapolis this summer. You know your setup needs upgrading, so take advantage of the Monitor Madness sale with this huge deal for a 240 hertz 1440p gaming monitor for only $299 or this 27 inch 1080p 280 hertz monitor for just $199 or check out this Ryzen 7900X combo deal with high-end motherboard and 32 gigs of high-speed DDR5 for a crazy $599. Right now, click on the link in the video description for store locations and to see their insane deals on PC parts, monitors, and more. We've got Clean Water. He says, hey Jason, I'm a student looking forward to building their very first gaming PC. They want an ultra budget build with a maximum budget of $400. They say it's gonna be perfect for 1080p low settings for games such as Apex Legends and CSGO, okay, easier to run titles. They picked up a bunch of components for the most basic function that they need and the Ryzen 5 4600G in the hopes that the integrated Radeon Vega graphics are gonna do the trick. Oh no, <laughs> integrated graphics in 2023. Let's take a look. Oh my goodness, this is a total disaster. Absolute total disaster of a build. Let's unpack what's going on here before my brain absolutely explodes here. Now you finished at $330, which you know like, oh, oh hey, 70 bucks cheaper than I thought I was gonna be. And certainly all this time technically works together, but it's gonna give you just completely garbage performance. Let me push through the number one problem with this. I won't even, let's CPU, obviously we don't have a GPU, but you have eight gigabytes, two by four gigabytes of DDR4, 2400C17. That is insanely terrible RAM, insanely terrible. I don't even know, is that just JDEC timings on that? Does it actually have an, is that the XMP profile? If so, how bad is that silicon? It's total trash. 2400 is stupidly slow. Even for a 4600G, anything with Ryzen, you want at least 3200 CL16. This is gonna basically put your Ryzen CPU kind of in the back seat, completely handicap it. And then of course we got the Ryzen 4600G, which we already knew was coming. Let me tell you the problem with the 4600G. For 20 bucks more, you could have gotten the 5600G. You say, well, Jason, what's the big deal between the 4600G, 5600G? It's the L3 cache on these CPUs. The 4600 series, first of all, they only got sold to OEMs at first and then eventually AMD did sell them to everybody else. Not really a good CPU processor, not really meant for gaming, to be quite honest. It's kind of meant for just cheap OEM desktops and only had eight megabytes, eight megabytes of L3 cache. L3 cache is so important for gaming, so important for gaming. Contrast that to the 5600G. It has 16 megabytes of L3 cache. 5600 has double that, double that. So compare the 5600 to the 5600G to the 4600G, you can see the massive difference there. And this thing is gonna absolutely kneecap you if you ever want to throw in a graphics card and just play some real games. And then we made another kind of mistake here by going with a B550 motherboard. We don't need B550 or X570. B450 would have been absolutely fine. Now you probably do want to still get a, a motherboard that has BIOS flashback on it, but you can get one for like 70 or $80 right now, a B450 motherboard, because it only has PCIe Gen 3 and so does your CPU only has PCIe Gen 3. You don't need this at all unless you're gonna go to a Ryzen 5600 or higher. And then we've made some terrible SSD choices here. We went with 256 gigabytes of M.2 storage and you're gonna get it for what, like $20? Do you know for like only about $10 more, about $10 more, you could have gotten double the space to 500 gigabytes. It just like doesn't make any sense to try and save that 10 bucks here. I like the case, the Roswell Prism S500 good case. I don't don't like the power supply, yes, on the one hand, this is fine for a rig without a dedicated GPU, so you don't really need, you can get D tier rated 
PSUs on the PSU cultures list if all you're ever gonna do is go integrate a graphics with it, that would probably be fine. But what if you wanna upgrade this with a graphics card at some point? That's like, kind of seems like the whole reason to go with integrated graphics because then eventually we're gonna get a dedicated graphics card. And this PSU not really appropriate. It's a Thermaltake Smart, but it's the white labeled series because it's just 80 plus, it's not bronze or anything. Now the 80 plus isn't very important. It's just the components that go into this Put it on the D tier. We don't want something on the D tier if we eventually do want an, a GPU. So we want to make sure that we get C tier or better. And it's honestly, it's only like saving us about 10 bucks here. So here's my big problem. For $330, we have put together a PC that is just going to basically be a paperweight. It's going to be a giant paperweight. You're going to feel like you completely shortchanged yourself. You're going to feel like you took that $330 and just lit it on fire. And we don't want that. You deserve an awesome gaming PC and we can get you that level of performance. I called this the $440 insane value 1080p gaming PC. Why? Because we're going to get insane levels of performance at 1080p for $40 more than you were going to spend. That's right. Only 10% more. You say, Jason, it's 10% more. We're going to actually build a gaming PC here as opposed to building a paperweight because that's what you're going to do. You're literally going to light 400 bucks on fire. We are going to give you something that you're going to be super happy about. How are we doing that? Well, we've got an actual dedicated graphics card in this thing. We've got an RX 580. There's used RX 580s right now for 90 bucks. We'll go through that in just a second. Let's talk about the performance difference between like the integrated graphics in the 4600G and something like the RX 580. So I, I found a graph here. This this is the 5600G versus the RX 5500 XT. 5500 XT has the same performance as the RX 580. 5600G is slightly faster than the 4600G. 29 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the lowest settings at 1080p, the lowest settings. Oh my goodness, I could not play the game at 29 FPS, let me tell you. And let's compare that to the RX 580 stand in 105 FPS. 92 minimum FPS, yes, please give me that. You could turn the settings up and still get great frame rates. Let's look at the game that you wanna play. CSGO, 101 FPS. You're like, oh, Jason, I can get 101 FPS or maybe even a little bit more if I overclock the integrated graphics here. Do you know that the frame time pacing on those integrated graphics is so terrible? If you were to graph it, it'd be like this right? Compared to the kind of more of a straight line that you would get with something like the RX 580 or a dedicated graphics card. In this case, you'd get 286 FPS, 166 minimum, as opposed to that 100 FPS just for 40 bucks. Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't go this way. Okay. How do we buy one of these things? Not that hard. We go to eBay, you use a service with buyer protection. So if you get scammed or if you get a card and it just dies two weeks later, you say, Hey, eBay, they screwed me over and they give you your money back basically. And they debit the seller. Great, great service. The only other thing I would focus on here that really two things. One is forget four gigabyte cards, just get eight gigabyte cards. I'll leave a link to this exact search down in the video description. You just want items that are listed as used, not as not working, so used. And I do it in the US and have some other filters on here as well. So again, use that link in the video description. I'll help you out. The other thing I would look at is look at the card itself. <laughs> Like I can already tell this card's got a problem. What's the problem? It's dirty as heck. Look at all the dust bunnies in this fin stack here. This person's so lazy, they couldn't take the time to clean the card before they put it on eBay. Uh -uh. No way, just, just ditch it. Not even worth your time. Instead, you're looking for a listing more like this. This happened to a lot of miners, by the way. They bought these cards right before the mining boom died and then they never really got into the rig. And so now they're left, you know, they probably bought it for like $300 and they're selling it for like $90. So this is a good value option. I would even take one with a couple scuffs on it. That would be fine. As long as it looked clean, it looked like it was gonna run. So then for the rest of the build, we're just trying to make this as cheap as possible. I looked at some other alternative CPUs, really wanted to go i3-12100F. Motherboard's a little bit more pricey. So we went with the Ryzen 5 5500. Just note, it's still PCIe Gen 3. Just avoid the graphics card specifically, RX 6500 XT. It's a PCIe Gen 4 card only, only. Otherwise, it really will give you terrible performance. But otherwise, the 5500 has the same performance as the i3-12100F in terms of gaming, which is great. Absolutely great. Six cores, 12 threads. This will get you going for quite a while. It's got double the cache of the CPU that you were looking at, and it's the same price. We want to pair this with a cheap B450 motherboard. So this is B450M M dash A, great board because it has BIOS flashback, which you will need on it. You will need BIOS flashback. Motherboard companies are so slow about updating these shipped BIOS. You can always download it from the website, but in terms of the BIOS the boards you're shipping with, I don't know why they're so slow. They just are. So make sure you get one with BIOS flashback. It's super easy to do. Check out our how to build a PC guide. We go through step by step. So for 79 bucks, $79, this is an insane value motherboard. We're going to get you an actual kit of DDR4 3200 CL16, 16 gigabytes, two sticks, two by eight gigabytes for 30 
$34. Look at that. Oh, $34.90. So let's call it 35 bucks. Still so cheap, so cheap. You got to get this instead. Don't get that crummy memory. And then I couldn't let you go with a 256 gigabyte drive for $27. Look at $27.49. $7.50 more than you were going to spend. We doubled the performance. I like your case. We stuck with that. And then I went with a PSU that's actually C tier rated here. It's simply the cheapest one I could find at the wattage that you need. So it's $54. Unfortunately, PSU is a little bit more expensive today than they were maybe two years ago or even a year ago when they were more like 35 bucks for a PSU like this. But this is going to give you all the power you need right now and give you some future upgrade ability as well. So again, $440, you're going to get insanely good performance versus that terrible integrated graphics build that you wanted to go with for $440. When's the last time you said you could build a gaming PC for that? Years and years and years ago and nowhere near this performance level. And you're going to get a great CPU, a great motherboard combo. You're going to get the right memory. <laughs> fixed your memory problem. We gave you double the amount of storage and we upgraded your PSU once it's actually going to be good for a dedicated graphics card. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. All right, we've got Burnt Plastic. I absolutely love the name Burnt Plastic. Awesome. Slowly gaining confidence to tackle building their very first PC. They like the idea of a future upgrade path for a graphics card, but maybe that's a rookie mistake. Oh, well, I don't know what we're talking about here, but I'm getting terrified all of a sudden. High FPS gaming is what you want, 1080p to 1440p, and you want to do graphic design. So you want to do Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop. Those are Adobe Suite products. We got to focus on NVIDIA here. NVIDIA rules the roof when it comes to Adobe stuff. AMD might fix that now, I know they're working on it, but they ain't there yet. And if you want to build this PC now, we're going to get NVIDIA for you. $1,700 to $1,800. This should be a piece of cake, man. A piece of cake. You should be 4K gaming and 4K, you know, doing all the other stuff. So let's see what you've got. Oh, Lordy, 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 Lordy. Oh, my. How does this happen? What am I talking about? You spent $1,700. $1,700. Now, we just did a build on our builds. If you, I'll leave a link to it down in the video description. Our best March builds for $970. It gets almost this level of performance for gaming boggles my mind how we spend like $700 more and walk away with almost the same level of performance. What am I talking about? We've got an RX 6800 XT $586 graphics card. That's only about a third of our budget. It actually is less than a third of our budget. And we didn't spend enough on our graphics card. That's just what it comes down to. I don't have a problem with this particular card. I wouldn't go with Radeon. I would go with Nvidia for the suite of products that you're looking at. This is a great gaming card. And that being said, it's a great gaming card for an $1,100 gaming PC, not a $1,700 one. And I can just see with over exuberance in a lot of other areas. I don't know that we wanted to go Ryzen 7600X here. Probably would have gone to 7600. You can turn on Precision Boost Overdrive and you get most of the performance, like 95% of the performance. And in terms of your creative workloads, it would be fine. Remember, you people say, oh, it's only got six cores, 12 threads. Look, this is not a Ryzen 3600. This will trounce. 3600, the 5600, a lot of CPUs that came before it. So you will get really, really good performance out of it. I just think we could have done better. We got insane cooling, insane cool. It's like, I know you watched one of those day one videos where I was like, oh my gosh, 95C, it's going to melt. It's going to, the whole world's going to explode. I knew this was going to happen with those reviews too. People just decided they have to get mega overkill cooling all of a sudden for something like a Ryzen 7600X, as opposed to just managing the temperatures and managing our expectations. So this is an overkill cooler. We do not need to spend $140 on a cooler like this. If it was a 3900K, I'd give you two thumbs up. For 7600X, we are wasting our money. I don't like this motherboard. This is the B650 Aorus Elite AX. Basically, if you're going to market, and I told all the motherboard companies this, by the way, if you're going to market a motherboard as a gaming motherboard, it better have upgraded audio on it. If it doesn't, I'm going to ream it. And for $220, this motherboard is basically an entry-level board that's masquerading, masquerading as a higher level board. You can get much cheaper motherboards with the same feature set on it, save a bunch of money and go out and buy yourself an external DAC, a digital analog converter, right? Or get a good digital headset instead of spending a lot of money and not even getting upgraded audio. I don't like the motherboard companies. By the way, price skating, something as simple as an upgraded audio codec and upgraded audio chip behind stupidly expensive motherboards just doesn't make any sense. Uh, I like the memory kits fine. It's, you know, it's DR5, 6000, CL32. The prices come down to a much more reasonable $127. I will say I think 5600 CL28 is 
faster than this kit right here because the timings are tighter, even though the speed is slightly slower, just slightly slower, those timings are, are kind of more important. And you can get it for like 10 or 15 bucks cheaper, but 32 gigs of memory, I wouldn't have a problem with you actually walking away with this kit. I like to drive 970 Evo plus two terabytes. Maybe you think about getting four terabytes here instead, maybe two of these, especially at the really cheap price, $129, really, really good deal. Uh, you went with the Lee and Lee Land Cool 216 case. I don't have a problem with this case, it's $105 though. It feels like you watched that Ryzen 7600 review and thought, oh my God, my PC is going to melt. So I got to get max airflow, max cooling. You don't need this particular case for the setup that you have going here. I think we could get you something a little cheaper. And again, funnel more money in the graphics card. I don't have a problem with the RM850X course here. In fact, we have one of these units. We did one in our recent build. Just note that it only comes with two PCIe plugins for the graphics card. It only comes with two cables, even though it's got three plugins on the PSU. I don't know, of course, why do you do that? Why don't you give it three cables? Does the cable really cost that much? I'm only spending $150 for your stupid power supply. You can't include one more freaking cable. I know you can buy it from Corsair, you know, if you reach out to their customer service, but it just seems really silly. That being said, it's a good unit, A tier rated. I do think it might be a little overpriced right now. And then we've got a bunch of kind of random Roswell fans that I don't even know where they're going to go in the case because we have a 360 millimeter all in one liquid cooler is going to go on the top. So I don't even know where these fans are supposed to go. It feels like we're just wasting wasting about, you know, 23, 24 bucks for nothing. So overall, again, $1,711. We're not getting a lot of performance for our money here. I'm left scratching my head. I think you can do so, so much better. I called this the $1,800 4K high FPS and creator PC because we're doing everything at 4K. Hey, you want to create stuff at 8K? No problem. This is going to get it done. And check this out, $1,791. That's right. Just 80 bucks more than you were gonna spend and we're still below your $1,800 budget. How did we do it? How did we do it? Simple, we invest a lot more money in our graphics card and a lot less money in places it doesn't matter. We went with the MSI Gaming X Trio. This is an RTX 4070 Ti. Remember, we have to go NVIDIA for Adobe right now. We just have to. If you wanna wait a couple years until AMD catches up, go ahead. But if you wanna build it today, this is the GPU I would focus on. I know some people are gonna say, oh, only 12 gigs of VRAM. I think there's plenty of workarounds. I think this is plenty powerful for you. Yes, occasionally a game will come out without any kind of optimization. It's garbage optimization. And then you wanna turn on ray tracing and all the things. And yeah, it won't run as well. I, I, I get it. But, but to me, this is the best value. No, in April, supposedly the 4070 is supposed to launch. It's possible there'll be 16 gigabyte versions of that. That might be the play. Just wait a month and see what happens. That's what everyone's reporting like video cards and others. Or if you absolutely really want to make sure you get that RAM, buy a used RTX 3090 for like $750 right now. That's a really, really good option. For the rest of the build, we went ahead and we switched up the platform. We are going Intel 13th gen. If you absolutely want to go Ryzen 7000, I know this video is going to come out with probably just a couple days left in terms of the big AMD combo deals that they're offering at Micro Center, at Newegg, B&H, and other retailers. I'll have links to all that down in the video description. See if there's a 7700 or 7700X deal with a motherboard and RAM. I know there's some really good ones out there right now. I'm going to go with the i5-13600K, which is really tried and true value in terms of living in that hybrid world of professional productivity work and gaming at the same time. That's what I've been recommending it for. And it's $300 right now, $300 right now. That's great value. It's got six performance cores. It's got eight E cores. It's got tons of core work. It's got tons of frequency for stuff like Photoshop and others. If you don't need the Intel quick sync on it in order to encode video faster, then go ahead and get the KF version instead. It'll save you like 20 or 30 bucks. I, I absolutely love ASRock Z690 Extreme, the pricing on Z690 motherboards is finally coming back down. After 13th gen Intel launched, they just all went sky high. Felt terrible because I had recommended a lot of these Z690s. And all of a sudden the price went from like, what did you see here? Like $160, $180 up to like $240, $250 and felt really terrible. So it's good to see the prices come way, way back down for 13th gen Intel. I wouldn't build 12th gen Intel. So you make sure to get a Z690 with BIOS flashback like the ASRock Z690 Extreme upgraded ALC 1220 audio on it. It's got three PCIe slots on it. Basically all the features that you need for a creator at this budget level, as long as we're investing a lot more money in the CPU and GPU. And then honestly, we're just looking to be super price efficient with the rest of our money. We went DDR4, 3600 CL16, 
32 gigs of it, and we did it for, you know, about $99. Now, if you don't want RGB, I got you an RGB kit because I thought, let's make this thing look awesome while we're at it. Then you can save about 10 bucks and go with a non-RGB kit. I really do like the Kingston Fury Renegade RGB ones. Um, Kingston has sent us some of these. They look really nice. They feel really substantial in terms of the heat sinks on them, and we just haven't had any issues with them. So I would highly recommend this. Cheaper than DDR5. Yes, DDR5, if you want to invest a lot more money, like another $100, get a DDR5 motherboard that's more expensive and then get DDR5 that's more expensive, like 6400 CL32, I think is right where you'd want to be. You can get like 7 or 8% perform more performance with a 4090. I don't think you're going to see it, and that's a 1080p. I don't see, think you're going to see the performance difference on a 4070 Ti at 4K because you're mostly GPU bound anyway. I know people are sick and tired of me recommending the Thermoite Peerless Assassin 120 ARGB, but honestly, $40. $40. Now there's versions of this that are all white, that are RGB, that have caps on the top. If you want something more finished and you don't like the industrial look as much, I'll leave a link to it. Remember links to everything are down in the video description. Check those out. This cooler is super performative, plenty for the 13600K. We don't need a way overspend. We're going to funnel that money into our graphics card instead. And I absolutely love this cooler. I stuck it out with your drive. I switched up a, the case in the power supply just because I didn't want to end up over your $1,800. If you don't mind spending an extra 20 or 30 bucks, you can stay with your case. I do like the Antec DF700 Flux. I've had a number of subscribers to the channel send me uh, send me messages and comments that they've used this case. They really like it. It's great to build in. They love the way it looks. Relatively new on the market. I do plan to pick one of these up myself. So I, I love three ARGB fans in the in the front. You can replace this one in the rear if you want. Otherwise, it's just you know it's just kind of a, a regular standard non-RGB fan for eighty-five dollars. I think this is a great direction to consider. And then I swapped out your PSU to it a cheaper, also a tier rated one. And this one comes with enough cables. If you do decide to go up and power on the GPU to something like a 4080 in the or in the future, if you just get a GPU that's gonna need the three eight pin power cables, this actually comes with enough cables. Uh, I think this is the wrong, this is definitely the wrong picture for this PSU, but for 850 watts, the A Data XPG core, and it's cheaper too, $137, also a tier rated, why not grab it? So overall for $1,791, I feel like we just got you tons and tons, tons more performance. We got you a way better graphic card, way better graphics card, and we got you a much more performative CPU for that hybrid gaming and productivity lifestyle that you're, you're living. We right sized everything. We right size the cooler, we right size the motherboard, and we got you better motherboard features, by the way. I think we did really well on the RAM kit, getting you enough capacity on it, and overall keeping your build under that $1,800 with way more performance. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like, this makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. <laughs> And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, did you see our March 2023 builds? We go through three builds starting at $600, going up to $1,600 for all budgets and all resolutions starting at 1440p and going to 4K. Check it out. Let me know what you think. And we'll catch you on the next one.